28 to 35, page 90 in the New Testament, if you'd like to follow along. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I have worn many hats as I served you for 16 years, but this wasn't one of the many hats. I think I've done it once, but I trust that God will walk with us as we enter into this scripture. There is a painting in the narthex. It's on your right as you come in, on your left as you go out. And it is a traditional rendering of this scriptural scene of two men and Jesus walking on a dirt path winding through the wooded plot. They appear to be in a teachable moment. Jesus has his arm up raised with his index finger pointing upward in a clear authoritative pose. The two companions are looking at him with great interest. Through the trees, a city far off in the distance is barely visible. What city is it? Is it Emmaus, the village where they're going to? Is it Jerusalem, where they've come from? Is it a city called heaven? Hmm. The three men on the road are engaged in conversation. And perhaps the most important part of this story happens beyond this snapshot. When they arrive at the village, at their destination, And it gets stated in the last verse of the scripture passage that was just read. And how he had had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. And how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. But first we need to look at the prequel, at the story before this story. And this part of the gospel story begins at verse 13 of Luke 24. And there we have two of them, presumably part of the group of apostles or disciples, walking on the road, going to the village of Emmaus. They were talking about the events that occurred in Jerusalem in the previous days. They were probably trying to make sense of what had happened to Jesus, They were sad and somewhat anxious, I'm sure, for their own safety. One was named Cleopas. The other has no assigned name, so let's just call him Everyman. And they were talking. I feel so sorry for Judas. I wonder what he was thinking. Why would he betray Jesus? Can you believe our priests actually wanted to kill Jesus? Couldn't they see that he was supposed to liberate us? And why was Caiaphas so pig-headed? And Pilate offering to have Jesus released, but the crowd wanted Barabbas. Well, you know, Caiaphas had his stooges in the crowd egging on the rabble, shouting for Barabbas. Yeah. Yeah, but so they they took Jesus instead. 
Well, and Jesus, he just took it all. He took the lash, he took the spitting, he took the taunting, he took the thorns, he took his own cross. Well, thank goodness that guy stepped up to carry it for him all the way to Golgotha. And his mother just stood there. Stood there and watched him die. How awful for her. How, oh, hello, where did you come from? And so, Jesus joined them walking on the way. Out of nowhere, he came to be with them. And he acted a kind of coy with the two men walking, pretending not to know. What are you talking about as you walk? Two stopped walking, looking sad and, and surely somewhat quizzical. What well, about what happened in Jerusalem? Are you the only stranger who doesn't know what happened? And still playing ignorant, Jesus asked, what things? So Cleopas and every man spent the next several miles recounting the events of the previous weekend. And all the time, they were blind to the identity of their traveling companion. Why? Why could they not see that this was Jesus walking beside them? Oh yeah, we are told that their eyes were kept from recognizing him, but why? Was this Jesus toying with them, seeing how far they could go before they saw who it really was? Why would they not know him? Well, perhaps Cleopas was too distraught. He was grieving. He was preoccupied trying to figure out what had happened to Jesus. He knew that Jesus was a prophet, mighty in word and deed. He knew that the chief priests and leaders of the synagogue gave him up to be condemned and they wanted him crucified. He was thinking perhaps thinking too hard and trying to make sense of all so he didn't see Jesus. And, well, Jesus is dead. And what of every man? Perhaps every man is also preoccupied. Perhaps he is thinking about what he will eat today or where he's going to sleep. Or perhaps he is worried that the next big payment is due and there are no more funds. Perhaps he is concerned that the person he has made a life with suddenly has other ideas. Perhaps he has seen some overwhelming tragedy and he is trying to decide how he can help. Perhaps he's just tired. And after all, Jesus is dead, right? Perhaps when Cleopas heard the stranger talking, he had a faint recollection of Jesus teaching them that the Messiah must suffer and die and be raised. He must have remembered at least the words of the prophets and the scriptures telling of the Messiah and all that needed to take place. Surely, surely he recalled, but he still didn't see. And every man, as he reads the scriptures, must know about God's reign and how God came to earth in Jesus and took up residence with his human creations and how Jesus showed us God's ways and taught us a new law. Surely he is aware, but he still does not see. But maybe Cleopas did not recognize Jesus because he was looking for a Messiah. He was looking for someone who would liberate his people and get them out from under the rule of the Roman Empire. He was looking for someone who would set the captives free. So this Jesus, who was crucified, disappointed. He didn't meet the expectations, and now this Jesus was dead. Cleopas wasn't able to recognize Jesus. Jesus 
had become the Christ, the son of the living God. And Cleopas did not understand that truth yet. When env- and every man is constantly looking for someone to fix his life, he sings, fix me, Jesus, fix me. And he tells stories about like the man who was on the roof of his flooded house, who waves off the rowboat. He waves off the motorboat and the helicopter, shouting, it's okay, Jesus will save me. Or maybe every man finds himself kneeling at the back bench of the darkened church, as depicted in the other painting in the narthex. The figure is kneeling there, longing for what is happening at the light of the altar. And Jesus is standing right there. And every man knows that he is supposed to be able to find Jesus in this place, but for some reason he can't see him standing right there. He has listened to many, many preachers who seem to have all the right answers. He has seen worshipers pass him by on their way out into the world. And these confusions have him looking in a direction that does not allow him to see Jesus standing right behind him. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and he does does not understand what that means. So during his ministry among the people, Jesus came to the disciples and to Cleopas and for three years taught them about God and about God's reign. For three years they listened and no doubt heard but they didn't understand. Now here Jesus is again, raised from the dead, walking with these men, and again trying to enlighten the disciples about his true identity. And they were still blind until the crucial moment of this story. The walkers arrived at their destination and seeing that it was late, invited the stranger to come in to rest and to eat. And then it happened. Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. He shared a meal with them. Then you hear, wow, it really is you, Jesus. I thought so. Didn't you every man? Yeah, my guts were churning out there with recognition, out there on the road as we walked. I just didn't trust my instincts. For him to truly see, Cleopas had to experience again the breaking of the bread. He had to do it again to remember as Jesus had modeled just a few days earlier. Jesus, through his death and resurrection, had become the cosmic Christ, the Christ who is one with God and the disciples and all creation and the entire universe. In order for Christ to be recognized as such by the disciples, he had to be experienced again in the breaking of the bread. And after they did recognize him, he vanished from their sight, but not from their presence. In the movie Places in the Heart, every man observes the life of this southern farm community, watching how the lives of the community members intertwine and play out alongside each other. The full impact of the movie occurs in church on Sunday morning. The choir sings, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, and the preacher welcomes everyone to the Lord's table. The eye of every man looking through the lens of the camera sees communion served to the congregation, to the widow who has struggled hard to survive and has just sold her crop of cotton, to her two children, to the blind rumor who has become a faithful friend, 
to the husband and wife who had been estranged and moved apart but are seen here holding hands. The owner of the cotton gin, the banker who threatened to foreclose, the musicians who played at the dance, to the farmhand who had worked so hard to be the first to get the crop in to the gin and who had been beaten by the KKK and run out of town, to the men who were under the hoods of the KKK uniforms, to the husband who had been shot and killed, to the shooter who had been lynched, they turn to each other, all of them, sharing communion, and they say, the peace of Christ be with you. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. When every man sees these people through the lenses of the camera, partaking of the elements of communion, the symbols of the body and the blood of Jesus, and sharing the peace, he sees them all as one with each other and one with the cosmic Christ who is one with God and all creation and the entire universe. And when the camera is turned off, Jesus vanishes from sight, but not from his presence. So as Cleopas and every man walk the path, they don't really know. They see and hear, but don't really understand. But thankfully, they were able to move beyond that snapshot. And when they got to Emmaus, Cleopas had the good sense to invite Jesus to stay to dinner. Thankfully, every man is aware that Good hospitality is a key to welcoming strangers. Thankfully, they shared that meal together. And finally, the eyes of Cleopas and the disciples were opened and they understood that Jesus' life was part of a much bigger reality that was not yet fully understood. And hopefully, every man is now able to look beyond everyday existence and anticipate a life free of fear and filled with the love that God showed us through Jesus. God is walking with us as we walk with the cosmic Christ connected to all of creation. And then these two men went on to Jerusalem or any town and told the rest of the disciples what had happened and how Jesus the Christ had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Amen.